Yes, yes. Welcome in. It's Balloon Party, and the 2024 baseball season is upon us. What a day in sports in the St. Louis area, Jackson Burkett. Hello again, everybody. My name is Timothy Michael McKernan, and the Cardinal season starts in five hours and four minutes. How do you do, J.D. Drew? I actually cannot wait. I've, Look at you, and that's because you took the over. I did take the over in the... In it's the eight and a half. I like Jackson's play. It's scares me it's so obvious right it like, scares me it's so obvious because nice. otherwise i might move all the chips into the middle of the table right and and sit comfortably right yeah because i mean I, yesterday we were talking like nine and a half we thought the number would be it was nine yesterday it's you dropped down yeah it's now eight and a half eight and a half so i took it but i am very fired up for this cardinal season I, how I, many I, units that was a one and a half unit play one and a half unit play wow. yeah but i tied it into a, a, a miles michaelis prop where are you going to watch? Good question, Tim. It depends how long I'm here. I can see you at Sportsman's with mm. like a snifter. Mm. More like Larry Wilson burger, steak fries. How do you do? Curly fries, an option. Curly fries, an option. I always get steak fries. So do I. I like might it. get that today now that you bring that up. It's oh. really tasty. I would say it depends on how long I'm here at the station for. Uh, I do want to hit some golf balls today. Oh, where are you going to get working? St. Louis's range is looking good, right? <laughs> really good. Yeah. They're on the south grass. Um, but probably somewhere close to my home and then hopefully get home in time t for the first pitch, if not second inning or so. Nice. That's the, that's the plan as of right now. Because you're concerned about your seven iron distance. Yeah. Trying out some new things. Just close the face. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's part of the work. I got a couple of drills I want to do. Nice. And then uh, I want to watch that. And then they got ILL tonight. ILL. Yeah. They're getting two. What are you going to do? It's going to start, we, you said, at 921 tonight? Yeah. So you're going to be able to watch the Blues and Flames? Listen to it right here on 101 ESPN with pregame at 6 p.m. I mean, what a day. And it times out perfectly. Right. Yeah. You get everything. You don't have to, like, uh, sacrifice watching anything. You can yeah. watch all. You go Cardinals, Blues, How do you ILL. do? Yeah, it's awesome. I'm gonna. I like Illinois. I like. I really. I. I think Illinois can expose some things in the Iowa State Cyclones. Okay. What about the Blues and Flames? Uh, give me the note. Give me the, the note. Right call. Flames are in shutdown mode. Yeah, and the, and the Blues are playing like. But what about Sunquist being out? Uh, yeah, I hate to hear it. ACL thing. That's brutal. That's brutal for this year and next year. Yeah, so he'll be on the show. He's such a great guy too. So I hate to see that, but. Uh, the Blues are playing uh, like the Rents do, Tim, and the Flames are kind of shutting it down. Mm -hmm. So I think this is an opportunity to strike. And then hopefully, uh, what, VGK takes a loss, Minnesota takes a loss, and uh, maybe the Blues can still be in it. Maybe this time next week the Cardinals are 6-0, and 7-0. 6-0 and and getting ready for Lance Lynn's home opener Yeah, a week from today. Well, 101 ESPN will be broadcasting live from the Budweiser Brew House inside Ballpark Village next Thursday for opening day. The home opener is a week away and will be set up just steps away from Bush Stadium with the opening drive, BK and Ferrario, and the fast lane all coming to you live next Thursday, April 4th from Ballpark Village. Our opening day broadcast is brought to you by Holiday World and Splash and Safari and Budweiser. How about that? Outstanding. Opening home opener, opening day. Now I am out of town. My sister's getting married a week from Saturday, so the family will all be out of town. Are you going to be hosting the program Han Solo and getting people ready for uh, what you consider to be the Timberwolves here? I am not. I am not. I will not be uh, hosting this program. I don't know exactly. Maybe maybe we can get like a petition going. Oh, I mean, if that's what the, listen, if the people want it. I think they do. Then I'm more than happy to come down here and deliver the heat. Uh, I would need a I would need a playing partner in a sense. I need, I can't just be on here by myself. That would go really badly. I disagree. <laughs> I mean, it'd be interesting, maybe a slightly amusing. For maybe me. get Woj on, Jalen oh Rose. God. Yeah. Oh, my God. That sounds like a great show. Now that you say that. Yeah. Huh. Maybe this could All be right, a decent. See, see. Well, it's, it's, up, but it's up to the people. Like, I can't. You you're going to. You're gonna... I'm a foot. I'm a foot soldier. You know, they tell me where to go and I march. Uh, John Scores is in the YouTube chat along with 103 Friends of the Feather, the Balloon Party Mafia, as they call themselves. And uh, John says, ironic watching the Blues in flames and the Cardinals are in flames. Well, yeah. the, well the enthusiasm. Yeah, I, let's, let, let's let a game go first. <sighs> but, I mean, as we are on the doorstep of the 2024 campaign, 
Doug Vaughn said this. Doug's worked in the St. Louis market since 1987. Tom Lawless, how do you do? Hmm. I've worked in the market since 2000. I can't recall, and Doug said this as well, less enthusiasm for a Cardinal opening day in my career. Hmm. Now, I realize that sounds like a Mike Greenberg, Dan Orlovsky, hey, we got to say something hyperbolic to get attention and hopefully some social media engagement. But truly, that is where I am on this. Yeah, I mean... I think part of it is that the season's opening out of town, but then the other part of it is the lack of belief in the roster. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's certainly understandable. I just, I don't know, some about this year because it's so pivotal and when you look at it in the context of the Cardinals history especially of the last 20 years this one like they haven't had a season coming off of such a clunker and it's not like the offseason gave you a lot of hope that things would change however I'm still optimistic I'm still hopeful and I think uh, you might see some things this year that you weren't expecting really such as what I think you might pump sunshine up my ass but I need some facts over here I'm a little busy (laughs) <laughs> I hear that. Uh, I think the innings eater thing is real. Like, I think just getting innings out of guys as opposed to having to pull guys in the third will yield much better results for the Cardinals. Like, even if Lynn and Gibson give up four or five an outing, but they can go six, I think you're going to see over the course of 162 games a lot better results in terms of the wins and loss record. And I think the bullpen will and be— And so Lynn and Gibson are your picks to click. I don't necessarily say click, but I think that they will accomplish their mission, which is essentially to get innings. Um, get it to the bullpen in the game sometime around the fifth or sixth inning. Yes, I think that's. I think you're going to see further development from some of the younger guys. I think Mason Wynn is going to turn a lot of heads. Not I'm looking only, forward to the speed of Victor yeah. Scott and Mason Wynn. Yeah, but his defense. Over under stolen bases for the Cardinals today of one and a half. Where are you going? Uh, I'll go over. I'll go over. Look at this guy. Wait, when you get if Scott wasn't in the lineup, I would certainly say under. But you got Scott to win. I'm curious to see. Still what, gotta get on base against Tyler Glasnow. Certainly. Uh, I can't do. I can't do Brando. No, I'm just so talented. Yeah, I'd have to pump cotton in my mouth. <laughs> um, but I'm curious to see where they put him in the order. Like I think ideally you would have, like, in a perfect world, Scott would lead off, and then you'd have win at the nine spot, and then you'd have a lot of speed oh, how at do the you top do? and bottom of the lineup there. But I would be surprised if they have Victor Scott in his MVP I share your opinion on that. Leading I off. share both of your opinions on that. Yeah, so I think I think Mason Wynn will also turn people's head to the plate. I think he's going to, because I, I last what, year... What, what are you not bullish on? Because you're, you're you're giving a lot of optimism, and I think it's it's wonderful. But is there anything that you Bullpen, Bullpens. Scares, bullpen scares me. Okay. Gallegos and Helsley are in desperate need of bounce back seasons. Obviously, injuries are a part of that, but you can't have the blown save situations that they did last year. And then I guess Paul Goldschmidt somewhat makes me a little nervous because he kind of usually starts the season off a little slow. That's true. And uh, heats up as the w- weather gets warmer. But if, you know, we, I don't know, as age gets, keeps getting older, if that slow start continues into a slower and slower start into a longer slow start. So that gives me a little bit of concern. His spring training numbers certainly don't tell you otherwise. Uh, Finished the spring campaign with a good game, but yes, overall it was uh, not what he would have been looking for. Miles Michaelis is optimistic. He said this to Katie Wu of The Athletic. I'm not going to tell all the people doubting us to eat S, and it's a word I cannot say on terrestrial radio. Mm -hmm. I'd like to But in the off chance I'm wrong, I look like an idiot. But in the chance they're wrong and I'm right, that'd be pretty neat. As Miles Michaelis on the upcoming campaign, he'll take the ball for your St. Louis Cardinals in a little more than five hours. Hello, friends. Number 39. Him and Steven Jackson, Tim. Who's your favorite number 39? Kelly Chase. Oh, yeah. Boy, that's a good good one, two, three, though, of kind of unique numbers. Doug Waite. Right. Doug, Doug Waite. And he played for the Blues? Oh, no. I, I've heard the name. Not Pot. Was he involved in the Monday Night Miracle? 
Or is that like a, was that Wiccan? If I were a writer, I'd just act, like, just like throw to like a. Writer is not only not listening, but like actively doing other things. So he doesn't Well, that's what we call plausible deniability. That's a good play. When there's an emergency meeting at Hubbard Corporate today about the Doug Waite conversation, is now it's now a proper noun. Writer can go, no, I was. Yeah, I was <laughs> doing other things. Right. Uh, I'm going to open up the air comfort service tax line. I feel, I feel, I feel a fiduciary, uh, Doug Waite was 38. So maybe that's what three off. Right, right, right. Exactly. We were talking about number 39s, Tim. Right. So why? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the only thing that messed me up there. Otherwise. Right. I could give you his entire stat. Pavel Dimitri would be my favorite 38. Um, oh no, 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 no. I can't. I know Pavel Buchnevich. And he wears 89. Beautiful hockey number, by the way. Um, but Dimitri, uh, Demetria, no, Pavel. <laughs> this this one. I don't know. I, this I, one's going to be more damaging than the Doug Wade thing. Like you can start rattling off Blues greats left and right, and you're going to be surprised by how few I know. No, I wouldn't say I'd be surprised. <laughs> I just, in a way, I feel like like a like a like I just need to protect you from the. From the, uh, right. The, the from, what, from what essentially is happening. Doug, wait, was 39. Oh, okay. Well, the that, Monday Night Miracle comment was the one that I knew was well, going to be problematic. there's a Doug involved, right? Doug Wickenheiser. Okay, all right. Say, okay, I don't, Doug, I don't, Doug, Doug I don't w. think that's going to get you the benefit of the doubt. Doug, Doug. As a matter of fact, I can confirm with you just by looking in the Air Comfort Service text line. I know hockey players by their first name, so, yeah, you know, it's tough. If you're a hockey player and your name is Doug, what is your nickname? Dugger. Wow. Dougie. Really? Dougie all day. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. It's either E-R or throw a Y or I-E. Right. That's correct. What would uh, I be then? It was about 25 uh, years, not probably to the date, but was this late April, early May? Pavel Dimitri overtime game winner against the Stars. The year the Stars won the Cup was Hull Skate in the crease. I don't know. Against the Sabres. The Stars have won a Stanley Cup. At this point now, I think it's performance art. I, I just I, decided it's performance art. I, I had no idea. I, had no, I thought they were a relatively new franchise. I don't know. Weak-ass uniforms. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. Oh, terrible. <laughs> know your history! That's from the 314... I can't know about everything that's ever happened in history. I'm not an encyclopedia. You're digging a deeper hole, Jackson. That's I live three, in what the... What about Casey Musgrave's deeper well? Yeah, I... I haven't heard the tune. I li in this studio, I live in a well. Like, it can't get much deeper. Eventually, you hit bedrock. I'm standing on top of it, baby. That's fine. That's where I like to be. Go to break. Piddles is killing me. It's from the 314. Opening day, baby. <laughs> that's 100 right. 162 of them. Uh, and uh, you can comment in the YouTube chat where friends have gathered to talk it over. That's 118 friends. Uh, I think Marmel drives my disinterest and lack of enthusiasm. I hope we win 100 this year and I can feel confident uh, next year on opening day. That's from Random Pizzeria. Huh, I like that <laughs> Random name. Random Pizzeria. It's a pretty good, it's a pretty good name. Um, what, what do you think the Cardinals winning 100 games? What kind of odds would you need to throw a little something on that? Plus 500. Oh, my God. I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah, five like to you're, one. You're at five to one? Yeah. So 20% of the time they play 162 games, they win 100? Mm, yeah, I mean, now. <laughs> right. I, I like it when you give the odds first, and then I can go based off of that. Because when I have to do it first, it's usually well, from my poker days, I can kind of calculate odds on the fly pretty quickly, right. you know. And uh, I'm like, oh, well, so one out of five times, you think the, the Cardinals are going to win 100 games? Maybe that might be a little <laughs> generous. I mean, because because candidly, I mean, now the cards have been turned over, so the hand is over. If you would have said fifty to one, I would have been like, yeah, I might look at, I might look at that, I might look at that. No, I think that's a little too much. Fifty to one's a little much. I, I think mean, one out of twenty. Okay, all right. The Reds winning a hundred games because yeah. their projections are about the same. Yeah, one out of thirty. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so I okay. So yeah, I was off. I was I put that's a right. hand that's under all, the pressure. I'm still dealing with this Doug people, Waite thing. That, that, well, I think the Demetra one and Doug Waite's involvement in the Monday Night Miracle are probably the two that you're going to have to. I, get, I should get half credit for the Monday Night Miracle. I, Doug, I, would, w. I would apologize for the Monday Night Miracle comment. I would tweet it out. As a matter of fact. Yeah. <laughs> Not bloody likely. I like the use of bloody there, and then I'm sure people because when you apologize on social media, people accept it. Yeah. 
Yeah, especially 101. <laughs> Listeners really love that. And uh, tweet that out with like a gif of the game winner of the Monday Night Miracle and say, I'm just looking forward to the Blues and Flames tonight because, hey, you know who the Blues played in the Monday Night Miracle? They played the Flames. Yes. I just, I, I set that up on the tee for you. Yeah. There's no way in hell you knew that. Flames, great uniforms, though. Flames, great uniforms, stars, not, and many storied Dugs from the Blues organization. All big segments here in the opener of Balloon Party on 101 ESPN. Welcome back. A lot of texts coming in about this Doug Waite Monday Night Miracle involvement. It's unfortunate. Earlier in today's balloon party, a gentleman I was assigned to work with <laughs> made reference to Doug Waite's heroics in 1986's Monday Night Miracle at the arena. He would like to now apologize. Talking about me? 
<laughs> insert Conor McGregor when he talked about apologizing. What did he have to say? I don't think I can say it on All here. All right, we'll wait to the podcast. For yeah, that. well, you know, I'll say it. Oh wow! Well, I'll just add that. You're gonna fly. blow it off. Uh, you know, I I apologize to absolutely no one. Ah! This is how we celebrate the opening day for the Cardinals in four and a half hours in Los Angeles. Hello again, everybody. What is it? What a wonderful day. It's just, you know, man, hey, I'm never going to complain about great weather, but today's a day that if the weather were garbage, they're like, hey, fine with me. Right. Cardinal baseball at three, Blues hockey at seven, and ILL at 921. Oh, boy. Be lucky to stay up for the entire first half. No, no, that'll be one that I'll uh, wake up in the morning and watch. Yeah, definitely. That's how that'll work. Uh, Jackson, what do you have on this Little Piddles? What is today's called? Uh, this today, Tim, is the Little Piddles opening day opinion basin. Wow. Rolls right off the tongue. I like it. And then inside the opinion basin is this Little Piddles confidence conference. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I will present We're to you. We're firing on all cylinders right now. It's fun to watch. That's Just right. Just like Tiger at Augusta. I'm in rare form. Uh, I will present a player or topic, and you assign an arbit- arbitrary percentage on your confidence on such thing coming true. Okay, and what, like, in what range? What are my range of these? Letter grades? These zero to one hundred percent. Zero to one hundred. Got it. Nolan Arenado returning to his career average numbers at the plate. Yeah. <sighs> 55%. Okay. What's yours? I'm a little higher. I'm like in the 70% range. You looking for a gig at Bailey's? <laughs> no, I'm just more, I, I'm I, I'm a little optimist over okay, here. Okay, it's fine. Paul Goldschmidt returning to his career average numbers at the plate. 41%. I'm a little lower than you there. Wow, 30%. okay. I'm really nervous about Goldie. Wow, okay. Hope I'm wrong. This is the, this is the show that I want to record and play back like in July. Yeah. You know. Yeah. We can save this segment. Mm. Mason Wynn finding his stride at the plate. Now, that's a little am, a little yeah, ambiguous. I, I understand. I, I respect your Candor? calling that out. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty confident there. I'm going to put that at 67%, two out of three. I'm at 75%. Okay. Right. Victor Scott being the starting center fielder for the majority of the season. I like this question a lot. I'm so biased on this one. Yeah. The others, I feel like I can kind of separate myself, even though I'm a fan of the team. Um, but on this, I just, I really want to like relive my favorite Cardinal team in my life was the 85 Cardinals. And Vince Coleman was, you know, and I believe there's an article either in the Post-Dispatch or the Athletic today about the somewhat similar paths of Vince Coleman and Victor Scott. Uh, and, and Vince Coleman is Victor Scott's favorite player which is amazing because yeah, obviously awesome. he was, you know, not around when he was playing. Um, but, uh, man, I would love that to be, you know, 75% because that means a windfall. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's a oh, windfall yeah, for the Cardinals. Totally. Yeah. Uh, and that also means that then you have a surplus, assuming that Newt Barr Edmund both come back healthy with what you would hope anyway. I suppose somebody could slip up and either get hurt in middle infield or corner spots, and then that leads to players moving around, but um, my bias will tell me 75%. Now, if I were to strip that down, I'd probably say 18%. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I'm, Hope, heart versus mind right there, Jackson. That's like, what that was. I'm like 25%, and part of that also is like even if Victor Scott's playing pretty well, I have a feeling they're going to want to give Edmund that look again. That's right. Because not only the, the, the economics element of it. Yeah, definitely. Because trade value too on him, you definitely want to if you want to shop him around, possibly the deadline. Also, uh, now I'm kind of freestyling a question here. When was the last time the Cardinals had like a windfall player who was like one of the lead producers on a team on a team being like what you said with Victor Scott, where it would be kind of a windfall? Like is it like Michael Waka? We have to go back to Michael Waka. Yeah, but that didn't happen until that September, yeah. you know, right. in thirteen. Pools? Yeah. <laughs> it really But I mean be. but but that's that's not that much of an outlier for a team to have somebody that they didn't even think was gonna be on the opening day roster, then, yeah. then I mean that's a that's a big thing. That's, I guess yeah. Yeah, to in that sense a hundred percent. But like like it's probably more likely for a crap team to have that. I'm sure that the Pirates have had that yeah. more recently than the Cardinals. But right. that speaks to whatever they're doing there. But even in the context of like a player that they're not spending 
real like huge money like pre-arbitration money on a guy who's like a lead producer on a team like i don't know if we've had that in a long long time. yeah but i mean that's because the organization has had star power for a long time yeah that's so it, it's, so it's tough to accomplish that right it's know? different than like the braves with acuna you right know, that's you know they have a star now but he at one point all right uh continuing on this little confidence conference thing. confidence conference for opening day in st louis sunny gray delivering a similar season to last year uh, 12%. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, last year was certainly the best year of his career, and he now dealing with injury. I was certainly under 50%. I was closer to 30-ish. Okay. But there's, he's, if he he's does a, it, it would be a wonderful... I don't... I, I Maybe my approach to it isn't necessarily anti-Gray repeating it so much as his le- year last year was incredible. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's not like he finished second to an average Cy Young. I mean, that was a great Cy Young performance by Garrett Cole, mm-hmm. and he was second to it. So to duplicate that, albeit, you know, already starting off the year with an issue, you know, and when you're talking about duplicating it, I'm thinking about innings pitched in addition to all of your other statistics. This is uh, this is a concern. Yeah. I hate that it is, but, you know, this is not starting off real well as far as the injured list yeah but I'm even not talking if, about just gray I'm talking about across the board for the team oh yeah uh but even if he delivers 80 percent of what he did last year that's a w in my opinion uh ryan helsley and giovanni gallegos having bounce back years um, both of them not just one both. i know i realize that's that automatically splits the uh, number i'll go 15 percent we're on the same page okay 15 percent locked up a little more concerned about gallegos than i am helsley but it's a concern all around. And in the final part of this confidence conference, Tim, Ali Marmol, remaining manager for the 2025 campaign. Jeez, boy, oh boy. What a, what a situation that'll be <laughs> if they were to part ways with him. I just, I, man. Okay, so this is that he stays manager. This is that he gets not that he gets fired. Yeah, and it doesn't he have to. He stays have, manager. Yeah, so they, I mean, they could theoretically fire him in the off season too. Oh, so you're counting, okay. So by opening day 2025, he's still the manager. Oh, so I have I have a 365 day. Oh yeah. Um, 85 percent. I'm at 80. 80 percent. 80 percent. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I can't be bullish on the Cardinals this year and then say, but also Marble is going to get fired. So when you're bullish on the Cardinals, what does that mean? Bullish might not be the right. I'm more optimistic than I believe the consensus of the fan base is. Okay. I would not necessarily say bullish. You're not expecting right. 90 wins, or are you? Right around there. Wow. All right. right. Look there. at this guy. I could see 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92. I think that's kind of the, the delta I am anticipating. Okay. Because I just think so much went wrong last year. Like, so much went wrong. And even, obviously, 71 wins is nothing to brag about. But when everything like that goes wrong, you still get 71 wins. I think there's a lot of as you might say, putts left out there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how many putts were left out there when it gets down to it. But yes, I realize from a from a mathematical standpoint, the Cardinals uh, had a, a large number of things go against them relative to, say, for example, this will be near and dear to your heart, and maybe 3% of the audience will remember this, but the 2023 Missouri basketball team was on the good side of the luck break mm-hmm. with winning a lot of close games yep. and single-digit wins. Yep. And it's not that I'm not I'm taking that completely out of what took place in 2024, to be crystal clear. But, um, yeah, if you're looking at it from a luck or bad break standpoint, and those are the teams that you usually want to wager on because the, the market undervalues them. Yeah. Uh, I, I might fire one on the A's over a 57 and a half before the season starts. America's I mean, to, to team. Think, to, think, to think about, I mean, could they lose more than 105 games? Of course. I mean, I don't yeah. think that's like, but still, that's what has to happen in order for that not to cover, <laughs> you know? So anyway, do with that what you want. All right, I got a break. 1033 in St. Louis. Time check brought to you by Clarks and Jewelers. Tim McKernan, Jackson Burkett with you. The program is Balloon Party, driven by Munganess, St. Louis Acura, and Munganess, Burkhardt, Alton, Toyota.
This is Action Jackson with a Sports Center update brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling. The Blues are back in action tonight as they take on the Calgary Flames. You can catch that game right here on the home of the Blues, 101 ESPN pregame, 6 p.m. puck drop at 7 p.m. And the Cardinals 2024 campaign gets underway today in Los Angeles as they take on the Dodgers. First pitch at 310, Miles Michaelis on the mound. And last night in the NBA, the Horns defeat the Cavaliers 118 to 111. Brandon Miller with 31 points. That was another Sports Center update brought to you by Saliga. Heating and cooling. An independent American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning Dealer. Welcome back to McKernan. Jackson Burkett with you. Second half of Balloon Party here on 101 ESPN. Missed the first half in which Jackson gave his perspective on the Monday Night Miracle. Uh, go back and podcast via the Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers podcast. What was that in the Sports Center update? I, I missed it. I was... Uh, Blues play the Flames. Right. 7 p.m. Uh, puck drop in pregame. 6 p.m. right here on 101 ESPN. Cardinals taking on Dodgers. Yeah, no starting lineup out yet. Just yet. Not yet. Uh, and then, yeah, I just let people know about the Hornets and Cavs game last night. Just thought, you know, scarcity, Tim, when no one's talking about it and someone does. Yeah, they you're be- more, you're more of become, a game theory guy. Yeah, they become the voice. Always have been. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in the middle of a little piddles Opinion Basin? That's right. Opening day Opinion oh. Basin. Uh, and I guess we'll move on to the Blues. We're going to move on to the Blue Note here on opening day. Yeah, I mean, this is... I think a lot of people moved on to 2024, 2025 on Monday night. The Oscar Sunquist news probably didn't help, but if Vegas were to win tonight and the Blues were to lose, I think even those of the most undying hope would have to say... It's not happening in 2024. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is it, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jeremy Rutherford did a uh, mailbag. Yeah, I saw the mailbag. On on The Athletic. And the first question uh, was, what do you think Doug Armstrong will do to improve the team in the offseason? We'll talk about buyouts. We'll talk about buyouts in there. Yeah. Uh, JR seemed to offer some caution to the fan base. The team is still in a retool. Do you think, even with the great stretch of hockey they've been on, that next season might also be up and down as well? Yes. Yeah. Said this. Uh, this I, I hate doing that. I hate saying that. That's, that's, that's one of the worst things you can do as a talk show host, sports or otherwise, I think. Not knowing, I've been Doug saying, Wade. Not knowing who Doug Wade is is number one. <laughs> Secondarily, uh, say, well, I've been saying this. But, I mean, I'm just, I just talk. There isn't a whole lot of uh, scripting that might be surprising to the audience for as well orchestrated as this show is. Right. But uh, this is this is the state of the blues. Now, the blues aren't necessarily going to say it. I understand that, but they're kind of stuck. But I'm at peace with it because... For example, and I don't know, maybe some people are like, I can't wait to see what Jake Neighbors does in 2023, 2024, but you're exiting 2024 going, holy crap, we got something in Jake Neighbors. Uh, So you can start to feel some optimism. But as far, I mean, listen, they could still get in the playoffs and they could still make a run. And I realize we're talking about something with a less than a 1% chance of all happening. I recognize that, but those things are still live. And so, therefore, you can apply it to next year and something surprising can happen. But there is a lot of talent in the Central Division. I mean, either the Nashville Predators or Winnipeg Jets are going to be a wild card. And and then you have two teams above them, most mm-hmm. likely anyway, in the Avalanche and the Stars. The Blues are a long way away from being at that level. Right. And Doug Armstrong said as much. So, not a whole lot. I expect... Not a whole lot as far as change goes. Uh, I think you will see one of the defensemen go in 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 one way or another. However, it goes down, buyout trade, um, and then they've got to get. I would think a top nine forward. But um, yeah, as far as the Blues like transforming themselves into a team that's going to contend with the top end teams in the Western Conference, it's just not happening next year. And. I'm kind of at peace with that. I understand the organization. I'd say, yeah, we're not going to be much better next year. They, they, that wouldn't yeah, necessarily right. be the greatest marketing strategy, but um, that's kind of where it is. Do you got th- What's more important is seeing young players progress. That's, to me, it just sucks, you know, whether you want, uh, you're going, okay, five years ago it was great, but, you know, it's now five years since the cup run. 
it's time to start seeing something. Well, if that's your mindset, you're probably going to be frustrated at this time next year as well. The most likely, you know, 99% as far as it not happening this year. And, uh, and I, I wouldn't expect it to be some kind of avalanche stars, Canucks point total for the blues next year, as far as what the, those three teams are doing this year. Do you think this off season that they would listen to offers for Jordan Bington, Jordan Bington? <sighs> What do you think? Yeah, I, th- I think I think you listen on damn near anybody, yeah. um, with the exception of of Robert Thomas. So yeah, yeah, I'd be surprised if they did it, but I think you would be pretty bold to be like, no, we're not going to. You know, well, I mean, well here, here's the one thing that's going to happen, and this isn't this isn't by any means you use the word bold. This is not a bold prediction. Something that will happen over the next month is a team that at this moment on March 28th truly thinks they are in a, a legitimate contender to win the Stanley Cup will lose either in the first or second round, and the biggest goat will be the goaltender. Right, and the fan base will be crying for that goaltender's removal. And then they'll be going, man, Jordan Bennington, wouldn't he look good? Mm-hmm. So that's 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 the way the supply and demand can can come to fruition. 1045 in St. Louis. We'll take a break. Come back with the final questions of the Little Piddles opening day opinion basin. Nailed it, Tim. Yeah. Well, uh, that's coming your way. And then BK and Ferrari at the top of the hour. Tim McKernan, Jackson Burkett with you. The program is called Balloon Party. It is sponsored by Munganess, St. Louis Acura, and Munganess Burkhart, Alton Toyota on 101 ESPN and the 101 ESPN YouTube channel.
Welcome back. This is Balloon Party. My name is Tim McKernan. That's Jackson Burkett. We have 10 minutes. Let's maximize them, Jackson. Let's go. All right. Boy, just not mass. I'm matching my, my passion. You know what? Let's do it. Let's do this together. Jackson just said he's going to tail my bet. You can tail it as well. All right. Let's, let's, let's bring the audience in. Because when it hits, everybody will send in thank yous That's right. and praise to me. Yes. But if on the off chance that it doesn't hit... Part of me thinks people will remind me about it tomorrow. Yeah, you might. But that could just be outliers. You yeah, know. I think like people respect. Yeah, they respect that it's a gamble. Here's what I got. Hmm. Orioles taking on the Angels. This is like uh, Adrian Brody's character in Peaky Blinders. A little bit more. I was going to say. It's, it's a not little, Brando. It's, it's Adrian a, Brody. Yeah. Also a fantastic actor. Uh, aggressive with Halle Berry at the Oscars. Orioles, minus one and a half. I got it at plus 115. That's a run spread against the Angels. This is a three-game parlay. Eh? Mm. Your second leg of the three-game parlay is as follows. Yankees and Astros over eight and a half, minus eight, 115. And then I have a fiduciary responsibility to my family and my heirs. Cardinals and Dodgers over eight and a half minus one twenty. Now I don't I don't have Ledoux money. I'm a, a meat and potatoes guy. Hey, let's have Tim over for some meat and potatoes. Vegetables, like don't even put them out. All you're eating is meat and potatoes. <laughs> so I can't I can't understand what a hundred dollar bet would pay. Right. Of course not. But I can tell you a $25 wager will pay $159.23. And one might go, hey, asshat, right, 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 right. multiply that by four. But I went to journalism school. Right. Bad career choice and also an indication of poor math skills. I would tell you it probably pays something like $636, give or take. 636. Yeah. 636, your friends. That's my people. Um, yeah, I'm, I tailed it. I tailed it. Max, Probably for a minimum of 10 grand. A max bet. It was max bet. I tried doing more. The guy was like, hey, you know, cool it. I was there like, it hey. is. There it is. There it is. He knows it's going. Let's ride together. Yeah, Blue let's ride. Party Mafia, let's ride together. Come on. It's, it's Thursday. Thursday is the day for wagering. You want to sweat? Yeah. Now, the only thing that I was, as I was placing this wager, I said to Jackson, now if I'm watching the Cardinal game and I see the Dodgers score runs, it's kind of like, oh, my that. And I don't want to be there. Maybe the Cardinals can score nine in the first inning on Glasnow. <laughs> like the Braves in that NLDS right. series. And then I'm like, all right, now I'm free rolling. Mm -hmm. And the Orioles That'd are already great. up 10-nothing on the Angels. Oh, man. And the Yankees and Astros are batting it around that wiffle ball field in Houston. That's right. And, and everything's good. Which porch is worse, the the Yankee short porch or the Astro short I porch? I am uncomfortable with how angry I get about the Cardinals red hats on the road, which will be on full display today. And the porch in Houston. Yeah. So much so that I think I like, not that it's tough for me to go under ropes, but I think. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get that for a second. Right. Well, I mean, my humor is so highbrow. <laughs> so I, when the Cardinals were playing down there in the NLCS, I'm like, this damn thing down the left field line. I want to I stand at home plate and look at this. And I, I kind of made my way out there. I don't think I stood at home plate, but I walked out there. Yeah, tough, I'm like, this is like Afton. <laughs> I played at Afton growing up. And I'm like, this is like Afton. Yeah, it is. It was it's annoy. stupid. It's but crazy. they can't do anything about it because yeah. right beyond the stands is a street. So there's yeah. there's not room. And a train track. And they got nothing at the train. Well, at least pools. I had a ball off of it. <laughs> well, it's still better than when they had a hill and flag oh my pole God, Yeah, like in Edmonds play. is running and doing one of those catches, and he's like, oh, here comes an incline. <laughs> it's so weird. That, Stupidest damn thing going. I know, like ballparks and their uniqueness is part of the cool thing about well, baseball. It was back in the early 20th century out of necessity. Right. It seems like there should be a uniform feel. I don't know about a uniform per se, but not having health risk like an OSHA situation out in center field. Definitely I'm with you on that. And maybe just like the basic dimensions, but to be fair, like soccer fields are, you can be different sizes. Um, but that's like, it's not like... You're talking a, about when the steamers were playing and Don Ebert was owned in this town? No, but like in the, in the Premier League, like you could like... Wembley Stadium, the, the the pitch, as they call it, is, is wider than other pitches. Nice. Um, Thank you for saying pitch. You bet. But, uh, like, it'd be weird in hockey if, like, the Coyotes and that, you know, 
community center they play in, well, like the ice was just smaller. Like they just would be like, everyone would be like, oh, okay, no. like it's so. Or like their goal was bigger. I get where you're coming from. I don't mind it, but again, it's just you know that thing in Houston is just <laughs> tilting to me for some reason. But hey, I'm betting over today where they're playing, so I'm I'm all in favor of it today. Any other questions today? I mean, what else do you have here? It's a it's a little pills opening day opinion basin. Yeah, I L tonight. I L I L L going up against Iowa State. We got offense. We got defense. Two of the top. In each category, going heads up. Somebody's going to the Elite Eight, probably taking on the delightful Danny Hurley, assuming they get past San Diego State. And could ILL return to the Final Four for the first time since they played at the Dome in 2005? What's up, D Brown? What's up, Tim? What up, Tim? Uh, yeah, what's your confidence going in against the, the Cyclones for ILL? I'm Here's rooting for them hard, baby. Here's the truth. I'll yield my time to you because I haven't watched Iowa State play since Fred Hoiberg was, <laughs> was shooting threes. <laughs> Maybe Marcus Pfizer lost in the first round. Was that to Hampton in 2001? Am I right on that? Was that to Evansville, Hampton? Or the coach of Hampton then left to start coaching Evansville? Doug Waite. Um I did a little, actually, I did a little game film breakdown yesterday, Tim. You gotta be horse plowing me. On the TMASTL Instagram account. Yeah. I did Is that a little, right? I did a little game film breakdown of the Iowa State. You were looking at film of Iowa State and started like with a clicker? Yeah. In Illinois, I was like, yeah, I was pointing out things. And I gotta uh, go watch this. Yeah. And so. Uh, Illinois now getting a point and a half. It's down from two. Ooh, okay. Um, but I, w- with the ball handling that Terrence Shannon can do and the, uh, the playmakers Illinois have, I think this is like a really really fun matchup because Iowa State hounds the basketball. They go crazy trying to force turnovers. But if guys off the ball can can step up and stay ready, I mean, I think we could have a real battle here. I'm, I'm very much excited, more so than any other game in the Sweet 16 for this one. If you're feeling like Danny Hurley might uh, see his reign come to an end tonight, uh, you can put 100 on San Diego State and win 470. But if you're confident in UConn, you got about $740 to win 100. That's your money line <laughs> for is... the... Uh, the table setter for ILL that in is, Boston. Yeah, that is And crazy. I wish we could bet on the starting time. <laughs> for real. I mean, the first game might start late for some unknown reason. Well, I, that, that would be really weird, but it'd be helpful for us. Yeah. See if Jonte can do any work. <laughs> <laughs> He's got an eye injury. <laughs> Jackson, do you have any other questions? Because I've got things to do here today. i got to get ready. We're having everybody over for the game. <laughs> That's right. That's, there's nothing you love more than hosting others in your personal domicile. That's exactly right. Right. For <laughs> putting out spreads, you know, little dips and stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm big into dips. Yeah. Do you have any other questions? I mean, this is a Little Piddles opening day opinion basin. No, nothing really of note. Really? We kind of ran through the gambit oh there. Oh, my God. You were surprised. I, mean, I, I got feel like, like a, we only asked four. I mean, I got like a uniform question. All right, good. Uh, the Athletic did an article about the Argyle in North Carolina's uniforms. You know what I'm talking about? Like the Argyle yeah. of the shorts. Uh-huh. And uh, I love that personally. I thought we were going to talk about baseball uniforms and there was going to be a new uniform out there today. Uh, my question is, like, what little details in sports uniforms across the board do you, like, just gravitate towards and like, and then some that you don't like? I love the simplicity of uniforms like Roll Todd. Penn State. And Penn State. That's exactly where I was going. I was going with that, too. Um, I like the one side of the helmet having the number. Yeah. The Steelers with the Steelers, one side yeah. having the uh, logo. Maybe some would call it an emblem. If Kerry Davis were in the building, he'd be able to let me know. I was cut from the Steelers, so I can't speak to it. But um, I just like classic uniforms, like what the Diamondbacks are doing. Just like oh it, god, yeah, it but, drives me up the wall. So uh, I love the Cardinals home uniform. Oh. I just I just throw the navy caps on, boys. Just throw the navy caps. <laughs> How much on. more excited would you be for the season if today they were wearing I navy caps? I feel like they're going to win 120 games. There we go. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with it. That's the difference. What the hell are they doing with those things? God, it's so like just it's such a simple fix. And they were doing it. And they were winning World Series doing it. Uh, anyway. All right, Jackson, you worked me up now. Uh BK and Ferrari are coming your way next for Jackson Burkett. I hope everyone has an opening day of wonder and amusement with your families and friends. And then the Blues begin the ten game winning streak to finish off the season and roll into the Stanley Cup playoffs. And then I L L tonight at Jackson says nine twenty one tip off. And we all hit on the parlay. Uh. Of the Orioles, minus one and a half against the Angels, the over the Yankees and the Astros at eight and a half, and the over the Cardinals and Dodgers at eight and a half. And we come back tomorrow fabulously wealthy, and you're all members of the newly formed Tam Avenue Capital Partners. <laughs> Jackson Burkett, I'm Tim McKernan. This has been Balloon Party on 101 ESPN.